Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today I'm once again answering a bunch of your questions, such as, do I think the Rolex bubble is going to pop, and how do I exactly buy watches a lot cheaper in Europe? All that and more in today's episode. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Boring one today, still wearing my Piaget. Um, but I think I'm going to switch it up for the day. I've been wearing this all week. What can I say? I've been enjoying it. And also, guys, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. We have some three very interesting watches that came in. We have a complete Tudor North Flag. Uh, we get a lot of Tudor at Delray Watch, but this is probably the third North Flag we've had in three years. I'm sure it'll go quickly. We have a vintage Gerard Perigo chronograph with the famous Valju 72 movement. And this was made by Universal Genève for Gerard Perigo. Something quite special indeed. And we have a Mont Blanc limited edition Vasco da Gama annual calendar completely unworn for under $4,300. Guys, this is an ultra thin annual calendar. Do not sleep on Mont Blanc. This is one hell of the watch for the money, and it's limited edition. All that and more at DelrayWatch.com, the only place you should ever consider spending your hard-earned money on a pre-owned watch. Anyway, guys, these are your questions as it goes. They were asked on at Federico Talks Watches, my Instagram account. I Post a Q&A picture when you see that come up. Ask your questions below. Do not DM me. I will not answer. Just being honest. So, in no particular order. Tim Young and C. Christopher Ward. Will they hold their value? No. Not at all. Not even a little bit. Not to say Christopher Ward's a bad brand. Because I think they make some nice watches. And I think they're made well. But any brand that decides to rebrand their image as often as Christopher Ward discounts their own watches as often as Christopher Ward's and just always has some kind of special going is not a brand that will ever, ever, ever hold value. Buy Chris Ward, enjoy Chris Ward, but don't expect to ever get your money back. Books on Time, a good friend of the channel, Charlie. Tell me how you feel about Memovox. Also, which are your favorites? Well, Charlie, I love Memovox. There's very few complications that are as functional as an alarm. Not to mention, even though you have two crowns, it doesn't really disturb the dial. Now, my answer as to which is my favorite, I'm sure you personally will find boring. Uh, I just like the modern Memovox. Uh, I, uh, you know, vintage alarms scare me a little bit. Um, they can be a little bit of a service nightmare, especially the A-Shield movements, which are not ones that a JLC ever used, but I like the modern Memovox. I'm just a modern watch guy. Fran Esposto. Hey, Fed. Love the content recently. Thanks, Fran. What are your thoughts on the resale value of Ming pieces? I know they've started to produce more in the last few weeks, but do you think they will continue to hold their value? Well, Fran, Ming has skyrocketed in value Lately, but also lately, they've had that kerfuffle with the shitty customer service of their limited edition, the Crash Messina Labs website, had crooked hands, yada, yada, yada. And people don't like to be played with. The response from that was god-awful. Now, while I'm sure Ming is fixing the situation, it took them a little nudge and some pretty shitty PR to do that. And this is when you see the weakness of a small brand. That and the fact that you have to pay like 12 months up front for a watch they haven't produced yet, so essentially the customers are funding their production, is just annoying. I think Ming will always hold uh, value decently well because I think they make handsome watches. They're interesting watches. Watch people love them. But if they make any more mistakes like the one they just made and they don't start figuring out their production problem, which is all their customers pre-funding their production, then they've got a long way down to go the, into the toilet hole. However, that's just me being very pessimistic. I am ultimately a fan of Ming. They're just going through a few growing pains. Hiresh Kapoor, if I remember correctly, you said something about the lines of not paying VAT in Europe because you're being a watch dealer. Can you expand on that? I'm quite curious. Well, actually, it has nothing with me 
uh, has nothing to do with me being a watch dealer. It has with me being to do that I'm an American citizen. VAT, for everybody that doesn't know, is value-added tax. It's sales tax in Europe that's already included in the price, and it's significantly higher than the States. It can be up to 20%, 21%. Now, when you buy something in Europe and you're not a European citizen, when you go to the airport, you get the VAT back. So when you buy a watch, let's say you get a 10% discount on the watch, you're also still paying, depends on the country, but let's say 19, 20% VAT. So not only did I get 10% off, but when I go to the airport, I get another 20% off. Why? Because I got an American passport. Isn't it a beautiful thing? Austin Lail 97. Hey Fed, love your content. Was wondering if you like cigars and if so, any recommendations? Austin, I love cigars. I've... A bunch of humidors at home, and while I'm a little bit of a Cuban snob, I do think the quality of their rolled product is absolutely god-awful, and I've been trying to expand. Um, listen, I've been loving Padron lately, and I've also been loving E.P. Carrillo. Don't be brainwashed into going Cuban only while Cubans make some great cigars. About one in five of them need to be thrown away because they're rolled uh, terribly. So try E.P. Carrillo if you want something outside of Cuba. E2E Watches. Hola, Fed. Love your content. Thank you. I'm a big fan of thinner automatic mechanical watches, 11 millimeters or less. What divers do you think best fit the bill under 5K? This is tough. Um, I don't know if it's under 11 millimeters, but one of the thinnest automatic divers I know is the old school Bond Aero Wave Dial Seamaster. At a 2892, thin movement, reliable movement. I do think it's 11 millimeters or less, and it's certainly under 5K. Charlie Lochner. Hey, Fed, longtime fan. Thank you, brother. Do you think that the Rolex bubble will pop soon? It's only a few years, and today I found an OP Greendale for $18,000. There's no way people will be willing to pay these premiums for long. Charlie, I'm going to preface this by saying I've been saying it's going to pop for years, and for years I've been very, very wrong. I have no problem admitting when I'm wrong, but I do think we have to be there. I mean, these are not $18,000 watches. They're $5,000 watches on a good day. They're machine-made, not hand-finished, not hand finished assembly line, entry-level luxury watches. They just are. As far as people's stupidity and them being brainwashed, I can't, you know, I, you can't account for that. But everything is pointing for it to burst. Even though I think that is going to happen, you should probably bet the other way. Because as I said, I've been wrong a lot. Raja Real Estate. Fed, tell me the secret on how to pick up a Pepsi or Batman GMT from an AD in NYC with minimal wait time. Spend half a million dollars. Either spend half a million dollars or give someone an AD a sexual favor. Because that's the only way in New York you matter. You spend less than half a million dollars in an AD in New York, you are about as important as the janitor. So yeah, not going to happen. E2E watches. Hola, Fed. Love your content. I'm a big fan. Oh, actually, we read that. I put that, in, I put that question in twice. I apologize. That is the abrupt end to the Q&A. Anyway, guys, give this uh, a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And please go check out DelrayWatch.com. We really are running some crazy deals at the moment. Guys, thank you so much, and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.